Don, you have been playing for a while, but you've been managing, you've been keeping busy, we've been seeing you on social media, so you ready to take a look at some of your most exciting posts? Sure. <laughs> I don't know if they're my posts or <laughs> people from the website's posts, but uh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> First one, one of the most viral videos of you on the internet is the day that... Oh, uh, Popcorn Kid. <laughs> this was fun because, like, what you, look at everybody else's face there. They're all looking backwards. And so I see him, he's got this, that, like that kid, right? He's like my son Preston's age at the time, I think. Mm -hmm. Everybody's kind of looking back, right? And looking for the ball, it's like five or six rows deep. And I see him with this big barrel of popcorn. And I'm like, hey, can I have some of that? And he just kind of looked at me. Right, and so I snapped. Did you ever end up meeting this kid afterwards? Oh, yeah, yeah. Or, like, I, took later a, on? I took him a ball the next inning. Oh, okay. That play was like during these days, I feel like you probably would have gotten some sort of popcorn sponsorship or something out yeah, of that. Yeah, who knows, right? <laughs> I've seen guys nowadays, I see him like, I think I've seen Prince uh, Fielder snatch some nachos, and every once in a while you see somebody doing it. So it's cool, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know if I, I probably wasn't the first, but it was fun. Now, so you take a look at that post, and now you look at now. You're the one giving the fans some stuff. Here you are giving the young fans some, some gum. This guy, not every day, but there's another kid that's like in the box seats there. And when he comes, Jonathan, every day he's there that we kind of mix in the gum. So uh, it's kind of become a, a ritual every day to, to give him gum. It's so awesome that you always give back and you also kind of uh, take notice to people who are in the stands. I remember one time you were coming through New York and there was a young girl who had a sign saying that she was named after you. Mm -hmm. And you went on over, hopped over the bench and the railing and took a picture with her. Right, yeah. I've, I've actually met a, a number of kids recently that, that's that been named Mattingly or, and it's, it's always cool for, it's always humbling for me, honestly, because to someone to name their kid after you, it's like, Pretty special, really. But yeah. usually, it's in the past, and early on, it was like a dog or a cat or something. <laughs> but I got a few kids now. So now, it's, now it's humans. And I love the girl, little <laughs> girls too, because like, we don't have any six boys in our our little blended family, right? So uh, it's always good to get a little girl. I feel like it's mm -hmm. mine. Mm -hmm. Now here's a boy right there, which these signs. Now this is at Marlins Park, so they're following you everywhere, whether it's New York, Miami. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It's like Milwaukee. There was a kid in Philly. Uh, it's cool. I, I love it. Honestly, I, I really do. I, I, again, like I said, I'm, it's, it always, it's always humbling mm -hmm. and an honor to me when someone does that. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about iconic photos. Yeah, the hit name. This is what everybody remembers for you, yeah, too. Yeah, I know. This I know. is amazing. Great poster. It had to be the spring of 85. Because mm -hmm. in, in that time, at that funny, if you look at that, that right knee, uh, I had a scope. I had I had torn, meni torn meniscus and I had surgery right before I came to spring training. And we did this in the batting cage. And I remember, you know, I'd been out probably been a couple weeks, right? But I was rehabbing. And I remember as we're shooting this, Mr. Steinbrenner walks by, and I'm like, oh man, you know, anytime he walked around, you were like a little nervous. And especially if you weren't like, number one, I'm hurt and I can't get on the field, but I'm doing this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. right? And you're always like. Oh man, he's probably gonna just be so mad about this. So, <laughs> it ended up being cool. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm sure once he saw it, he's probably like, you know what, that was really <laughs> sweet. Uh, he probably hated it at first, but <laughs> over time, he probably was okay with it. <laughs> How about this one? Got the mullet going? Yeah, mullet. Little flow? Yeah, big giant <laughs> chew in my mouth there. Uh, those were the days, right? Uh, mullet days. Looks like you're ready to match a couple of baseballs. I don't know. I was <laughs> shocked when I seen that, how long that was back there. That was really long, way longer than I looked way worse than I thought it looked. I thought it looked really great, uh -huh. right? But it looked awful. Will you ever <laughs> grow it back? The mullet? No way. No <laughs> chance. Not that I could get to get it back. <laughs> the hair's going away in less, not more. Love to be able to have that much. Again, <laughs> Here's a nice moment, it looked like. Yeah, I don't know. That, you know, I, I look at that and I'm just looking young, right? Mm -hmm. you, you feel like, man, I was so young and you, you should enjoy this game. Look, I'm having some fun, right? Yeah. So I think this game is meant to be played with some fun and joy and it's what you grew up with, right? You grew up as a kid, you love baseball, at least I did. And I think the guys that play it the best have the most fun. Mm -hmm. It seems like they're having fun out there. Now, in a lot of these photos that we just looked at, you're obviously having fun. A lot of your baseball cards, you have some awesome ones, and one of the best ways that you've been able to raise money 
is by having people donate towards signed autograph mm -hmm. cards. So, do you have a favorite photo of yours that you have taken that you've seen on a baseball card, specifically off the top of your head? You know, like if I had to say my favorite baseball card, it's probably my first one. Uh -huh. Obviously, your rookie card, and when you're coming to the, you get to the big leagues, and you're, you know, you're a kid, you you, you have baseball cards, right? And you see these guys in the big leagues, and you're, you know, your dream is to get to the big leagues. And uh, I shouldn't, I wouldn't say I dream to be in the big leagues and have a baseball card, but I mean that's kind of like when you see your first baseball card, it's almost like wow, that's. So the Topps card is the first one I ever got to see, and that was like that's kind of the one I think about the most. Obviously, there's been a lot since then, different companies and sets, and you know all kinds of different cards that you see. People I think make some of them, and but yeah, your first one is really like the one you think about. Cool, love it, love it. All right, so talking a lot about iconic photos, and this one right here. Here you are with Derek Jeter. Captain, the captain. Yeah, I, I have no idea what I'm telling him there. I probably didn't need to tell him anything. Let's <laughs> try to stay out of his way. You want me to give you what I think about when I think about that photo? Yeah, why not? Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, look at that. Look how fat my face <laughs> is right there. Right? I'm like, God, I probably weighed like 220 or 215 there. I was like, dude. You still got it though. You got you got no. the nice mustache too. You had to Rocking. get rid of that too. It's turning white. It's like get rid of the mustache. <laughs> so this was a, a, a pivotal period in your look. I, I'd imagine it changed after this. It did, quickly. <laughs> that mustache had to go, I had to lose some weight. And if I would have seen that photo, I would, yeah, whatever. <laughs> no, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> I think the same thing. <laughs> All right, so then uh, <clears throat> fast forward, here you guys are still together. It was pretty cool. Yeah, and I'm happy about that. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Seeing Derek from the standpoint of his first spring training, coming to camp looking like total misfit, right? Like didn't fit in. This wasn't. You know, you see major league guys, you see a kick him out of high school, it's obviously not fair. But then thinking about the changes over the, you know, the next spring and then the next spring. Uh, and then really what he was able to accomplish. And then now, you know, he owns a club and, uh, and the executive and, you know, leader of our organization. And, you know, it's, it's cool to be a part of this and uh, what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Honestly, he's doing a great job. And I think bringing the same mindset as a, he has a player to what we're trying to accomplish now, the consistency of staying with the plan and all the things that he talked about when he originally came in, uh, I think they're going to pay huge dividends over time. Now, something that's amazing with you that you've been able to do is been able to keep so many great relationships, close relationships, teach people what you know, and you have so much wisdom, whether it's on the baseball field or off the baseball field. And a lot of that you get to pass down to whether it's Jeter, who we were just talking about, or guys like John Carlos Stanton. Yeah, John Carlo was uh, you know obviously here a couple of years, and seeing him from the other side of the field with the Dodgers, just a tremendous player and talent. And uh, you know, kind of watch him play was was exciting. Obviously, the, the second year he had there was off the charts. Uh, you know, and, and kind of he struggled early. It seemed like in the year before, kind of was struggling. Uh, found it then, ended up having a pretty good year. But this one, he stayed healthy all year long. And anytime this guy stays healthy, it's going to be a monster year. Now, right here on the golf course. That was at a golf alley at the beginning of spring. Uh -huh. And so uh, I bet he hits it a long way. <laughs> yeah. That's what I would think. And you swing lefty on the golf course? I do. Awesome. Is it as sweet as your baseball swing? Probably, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's not producing any good results. That's what I'll say about my golf game. I don't play that much, but it's not, it's not turning into scoring. Is that, that what you say? I may have a good swing, but I didn't get any hits. You can say, I got a great swing, but he never hit. All right, so we're coming down the home stretch, and a lot of what you learned has come from some great people who you played with and been associated with. Here you are, the ball short, Sam Brennan, Buck Show, Walter. Yeah, I've seen that photo. I like that photo. Uh, you know, the boss was always relaxed in spring, right? He was always having fun. And, uh, you know, just Buck coming in was, I think, a, a pivotal moment uh, within the Yankee organization. We had floundered around for, you know, three, four years and no real direction. Mm -hmm. And I thought uh, when Buck came in, he set the course uh, and made it, did a nice job of him. And, and I think it was Stick that was the GM at the time. Uh, I thought they did a great job of bringing in the right players mm -hmm. and changing the tone of the rocker room from, uh, you know, guys that just didn't 
par partially guys that didn't care mm -hmm. and brought in gamers and guys that played hard and it mattered to them if they won or lost. Uh, and I think that was, I look at that as a turning point in the Yankee organization for me at the end of my career, but also the organization moving forward after that. And based on what you said before, I'd imagine that this is the look that you really like. Got the short hair, nicely freshed mustache and looking lean. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, younger, right? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> I don't know if I ever like many photos I see of myself, but it is younger. <laughs> All right, here's another great photo of you guys here, Ted Williams, Wade Box. Man, what were you guys talking about and where were you? This looks awesome. I think this is Tio Pepe's or something like that. It's a little place across from uh, Mr. Steinberg's hotel. It was in spring training. Um, I think Sports Illustrated article with Peter Gammons, and we were talking about weight shift, weight shift, shift and weight, and Ted uh, pretty much ran the conversation. Uh, <laughs> And we just talked hitting, and it was kind of it was fun, and it's really been uh, an article that a lot of people have referenced and talked to me about. They've seen the photo, and and we had a lot of shrimp and beer, yeah. and that was a good night. That was the best part. Especially and and being around Ted really was was an experience. And obviously, Bogsy, we were we weren't teammates at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, we were we were uh, on opposite sides, mm -hmm. uh, but it was it was cool to be there. Ted was great. Um, yeah, very thankful for that right there. That's a, that's a pretty cool time. It's an amazing photo. Definitely a frame type photo, which here we're going to end with this one. Yeah. A throwback photo of you. Yeah, Man, high how school. How old were you? No, I was 17, 16, 17. Wow. Yeah, high school. I don't know when or what year, but I know we, we won a state championship when I was a junior and we lost in the final game as a senior. So we had won 59. I think about that, I think about we won 59 straight games, had a chance to win back to back state titles and we got beat in the final game. What would you say is, is your favorite part about social media from what you know? It's always fun, like Lori posts a lot, mm -hmm. you know, of, of Louie and what's going on and just getting videos from her. I don't, I'm not quite sure all the stuff that she posts, but whatever she's posting, she's sending me too, so <laughs> I know I get to see it. And, and <clears throat> so I think, and then hearing feedback, oh, I follow Lori and Louie, I see him so cute and stuff like that. And so I, I love that interaction of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the other part I like is just our foundation, being able to show what we're doing um, with, with kids and, and how we're affecting lives. You know, if it's through computer labs or it's through reading programs, it's through sports. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the fact that, you know, it's, it's a good feeling to see these kids' faces and I love seeing what we're, you know, not only being a part of what we're doing, but then being able to see it and then you see kind of good because it's almost like a record of what you're, because sometimes you know, you're doing something, you're putting, you're getting a computer lab together one year, and then maybe you're doing a reading program in, in, in another year, but then all of a sudden, you know, four or five years down the road, you get to see like, kind of like, you know, kind of like all of it, and it's like, hey, we're getting, you know, we're, we're, we're making some headway, and we're, we're having a, a positive effect in our community, so being able to see it through that is, is always good. So now's the time for the plug, which is, what does Madeline Charities Instagram and Twitter page have to offer and why should they follow you guys? Well, I think the biggest thing is if you're interested in Madeline Charities, right? I mean, it's not so much, I don't know, I, I don't, I'm not much on the personal side of it myself, but I, I see the value. But I think it, more than anything, if, if you want to follow what's going on and what's happening in, in probably our community, or I guess if you're interested in what I'm doing, mm -hmm. uh, it, it was a reason to follow and, and, and see really what you know we, we stand for. And I, I guess that's what it, it really does. I think our charity really represents you know our, our love for kids and our belief in that we got we got to help the, the most underserved kids and give them a chance to have to make good decisions, uh, to give them an opportunity to have success that, that I've had or anyone has had and you know, let them know that it comes through education, it comes through good, making good choices for kids, but you gotta have those opportunities to make good choices and some kids don't get the same. I shouldn't say the opportunity I think is almost always there, but choices are just so much harder mm -hmm. uh, for certain kids. Awesome. Hey, well, Don, thank you so much for letting us catch up with you, talk right. a little bit about some of your fun posts, and now you know where to find this guy, Madeline Charities, shoot him a follow. A lot of good stuff on the way, right? Cool. Oh, <laughs> always, always doing more. <laughs>